Most of these rear view camera systems that use a display that mounts on top of your rear view mirror come with a power adapter that looks like this. So it has a long cord with a USB connector that supplies power to the power input on the display. And on the other end, it has a cigarette lighter plug. And so inside here, it will convert the 12 voltage, 12 volts from your cigarette lighter output to the five volts that is needed to run this display. Now, unfortunately, on my Sprinter chassis, there's no really easy way to run this around. The wire's not really conducive to running this around and into the cigarette lighter port that I have, which is down below my cup holder here. So I really don't want this cable dangling down while I'm driving in order to supply power to this display. And if that's the case for you, I'm gonna show you in this video how to use one of these optional power adapters that comes with a long cable, long enough to supply the power to your display because it also you will use the uh, uh, USB connector that's required for your display. And then you can weave this through the overhead and down below to a fuse box and supply the 12 volts to this adapter, which will do the same thing. It'll convert 12 volts to five volts. And that way I can run this in a way that is um, invisible and doesn't just hang there every time I look over at it. So if you stay tuned to this video, I'll show you several important things. First, I'll show you how to choose the right one of these power adapters to work with your particular uh, rear view camera. And I'll show you how to connect this to the fuse box so that whenever you turn on your ignition, you will have power to your display. And I will put links to the components that I'm uh, showing you down below the uh, video so that you can um, purchase them yourself if you're interested in these. So please stay tuned. There are a number of different power adapters out there which you can buy, but you need to be careful in choosing to make sure the one you choose is the right one for you. And here I have two different models that I purchased to use with my Wolfbox 840H camera. So the first thing you wanna make sure is that the USB connector that comes with your power adapter is the right USB type for your camera. This is a mini USB. This model can also be bought with a micro USB, but for my camera, I need the mini USB. And this one also comes with a mini USB. Now, all is not lost if you have the micro USB on your adapter and you need a mini USB, because you can get an adapter to go from one USB type to the other. But it's a much cleaner installation if the connector on the adapter comes with exactly the one you need. So that's the first thing to look for. The second thing to look for is the current specification on the output of this adapter. So they all should be very similar. They sh all should have an input of 12 volts or 24 volts, which this has, and the output should be five volts. In this one, the output current is two amps max. On this one, the output current is three amps max. Make sure that the current rating will meet and match the requirements of your display. The next thing you wanna check is the cable length. So this one here has perfectly sized length of the cable to go from the display. I can run it along the headboard there and down the side into the fuse box area, which is under the feet of the passenger seat and then this has enough cable to connect to the fuse box. So this one cable length perfect. This one has a fairly short cable length on the USB connector which means that it is designed for this device to be located close to the display. Now the reason for that is it has an on off button and it has some adjustments because this model can work with the system where it is 
always on even when your vehicle ignition is turned off and you can set this for what voltage it will turn itself off so that you will not run down your battery completely but I don't want it run it that way and I don't want this extra cable hanging up by my display but I may not be able to do anything about that plus this will have to be up close to the display as well the only other alternative I have is to get a, a longer USB cable and connect from here and then up to the camera. So that's not really the most convenient setup for me. Now this cable on this end is long enough to go from the display down into the fuse box. So pay attention to the cables and where your adapter is going to mount whether it's down in the fuse box area out of the way or it needs to be up next to the display. Now, the advantage of this is you can turn this on and off with this button. So if you want that feature, and you can also use this, as I said, to be always on even when the ignition is off. The next thing to look for in the adapter is how many cables does it have on the power input end? So this has two. So this has the 12 volt supply, and this is the ground. And that's very simple, that's all I need. This one actually has three, and you don't have to use all three, but it has one for 12 volt supply, the other for ground, and then it has another one that goes to the battery, which also supplies 12 volts, and that is in case you want this thing to be always on when you're away from the system so that it can monitor in case somebody tries to break in and so forth. So your camera will be on. And like I said before, you can adjust the voltage level so that this actually will turn off. Let's say you adjust it to 11.8 volts. Once the it reads 11.8 volts on the battery, it will shut the system off so it doesn't completely discharge your battery. So the ones with the three wires can be configured to be on while the ignition is off and you're away. So the next thing is how do you connect this to the fuse box and so forth. So the ground is pretty straightforward. You find a uh, screw somewhere or a bolt and you will fit that in the, to that a, a bolt that is grounded and you will put that in underneath the bolt, tighten it down and you have a ground. This one has got to be connected and this particular system comes with these adapters and so it just simply plugs in this side to the correct adapter and you pick which adapter works with your different fuse box system and um, what you would do I have an example here already made up here is one that would work with my particular fuse box so we would just plug the DC connector into here and then this will plug into the fuse box and I'll show you how that does it and then the original fuse in the fuse box goes in one position and the fuse that comes with this system which is probably about five amps fuse will go in the other slot and then this will supply power to your camera so like I said this system here comes with multiple choices. If yours doesn't have the right choices, you can buy one of these aftermarket uh, fuse connectors. Now on this other camera, it already comes hardwired with these particular fuse adapters. Now these don't work on mine. These are not the right ones. This is the right type of fuse adapter and you can see much Dif different style of fuse connections between these two. So with this one, I'll have to do some adaptation. I'll have to cut these wires and wire in one of these. I don't need this one because I'm not going to have the system on all the time. So I'll have to cut this and wire in one of these. So let's do a quick review. First of all, you need to buy the um, power adapter that has the right USB connector the one that is got the right current rating for your camera, the one that has sufficient cable up to the camera and also down to the fuse box, 
Um, if you don't mind, you can, you can splice the wires uh, to make them longer. A little harder to splice the USB so you can buy a USB adapter. And then the type of fuse connector so that it will work with your particular fuse box. Like I said, on, on the Sprinter fuse box you need this style, not that. And then if you want the always on version, you're going to get the one that has the th extra wire that goes to the battery. Let's take a look at this brand right here, which you can find online, and I'll put links to it as well. This one, you can order it with a um, mini USB, micro USB, or USB-C connector. But I think the rest of the hardware is basically the same. And don't forget, this is a maximum of two amps, so make sure that works with your dash cam. This particular one comes with all of these. So it comes with the basic hardware to adapt the 12 volts to 5 volts along with the cables. As I said before, I like this one because the cable lengths are pretty, pretty long. There's a nice long cable length to go up to the camera and work its way down to the footwell on the passenger side where on my 2021 Leisure Travel Van Sprinter RV, I can find the fuse box that I need to find to connect this end, the red and the black wires to. It comes with some fuses, a fuse puller, uh, trim tool, instruction manual, and then these things for going, for adapting this to go into the fuse box. So let's see how you would install this on the... So to get to the fuse box, we take out the two screws holding this trim plate in, remove that. These are twist screws holding this piece in. Take that out. And then we are going to lift this and hold it out of the way so we can get to the toolbox, which we have to remove that to get to the fuse box. So there are a couple of tabs at the top of this toolbox that you press in to release the toolbox. And you can take it out set it aside and that reveals the fuses. So here's a close-up of the fuse box and the footwell of the passenger side and this is again on my 2021 Leisure Travel Van Sprinter RV and there's two places you may be interested in. There's an empty socket here and there's one with a 7.5 amp fuse here. Now if you have a system where you want the power to always be on, in other words, when you're away from the vehicle, you want the camera to be able to turn on in case there's uh, some kind of activity going on around your RV, that's the one you want. This is an always powered socket. In my case, I don't want that. I just want it, the power to be supplied to the rear camera whenever I have the ignition on. So this is the socket that I will need to use. So I'm going to need to take the 7.5 amp fuse out and use the fuse adapter along with this original 7.5 amp fuse and a 5 amp fuse that will protect the camera. So here's that fuse adapter. We have the 7.5 amp fuse that I just took out of the vehicle. We have the 5 amp fuse that came in the package with the hardware kit. So that one will go in this furthest position and the original one will go in this position. And then we'll plug this in where this 7.5 amp fuse used to be after we connect the red wire on the hardware kit to this part. So since this is already a bullet type connector, both of these are bullet type connectors, you can just simply insert that in there. Push, I would push it all the way in and you can even crimp it a little bit to make sure it's tight. And then now we're ready to install this and we're gonna also have to uh, find a grounding point. So this compound fuse holder will go in this second slot. That's where the 7.5 amp fuse was to begin with. We have to make sure that we get it in there secure. And the one thing about this um, compound fuse holder there's a little plastic lip here and so it doesn't engage correctly with this little re um, 
release here. So this is designed to help hold the fuse down in there. So I just have to make sure we push this in securely. So I have that in there securely. I have this wire routed and then I've connected it to the other cable that goes to the display and here is the ground. So the ground's going to go in here and when I take this off this is just plastic down here. So that's not going to make a good ground unless I put something metallic in there. So I'm going to use this and put this around here and then screw this on top. So in the end I decided to run the wires down through here. I don't think they'll catch on anything. I tape them down, bring them over here and then right over by the side here is the voltage converter and then I bring the wire up this way like I did the video wire all the way up here and across and then up there and then I'm going to put it behind the uh, plastic plate that covers some of the electronics and stuff. All right so we brought the power adapter from the hardware kit up underneath the headliner just like I did with the video cable and you could actually coil it up here or you could take out some of the slack back there and then just attach it here and you're fine but I want to hide it behind this plastic piece same as I did with the video cable that came up the same route so how do you get this off so the established method is to grab a hold of this metal bar which is behind the mirror it's part of the mirror attachment it's what the mirror connects to and what holds it in this position you have to rotate 90 degrees it should pop off and then it'll pop out and then you can take off this plastic piece here slide this whole thing out okay now I've done that before and um, actually had a little bit of trouble getting that piece back this metal bracket uh, back on so the second time I've done this I've pried this center plastic piece out and you have to be careful if you try to do that because I did break part of the connection and so you see there's two tabs down below here's the cutout where the wires can come through and where the mounting bracket for the mirror goes and then there's some plastic tabs and clips on either side and I broke this one off so this will go back and it'll stay in place no problem but now it's just easier for me to take everything off that way and uh, here's my Reflectix which is a little in the way this just pops out and comes down and out and that's all there is to it and so you see here's the mirror bracket and it attaches up here and then there's some cutouts for a wrench so I actually had to use the wrench to get it to rotate back on it was very tight so I don't want to mess with that anymore I feel like I do that too many times it won't go back on so I can just bring this cable around through there and then just like the video cable they'll go through this cutout here and everything will be nice and clean so I've got to clip this a little bit tie it up and put it back in there so that not too much sticks out so let me do that and I can reassemble this and you just slide this back up you just slide this back up and reattach the center piece uh, after you reattach the mirror so like I said you can take the mirror off by using this bracket rotate it 90 degrees it'll pop off or you can try what I did the second time and see if you can get this off without breaking these clips that's a little easier than having to take this off and put it back on but it's up to you how to do it so let me put this back together so with the hardware kit now installed you can see nice clean installation no dangling wires and let's see what happens when I turn on the ignition wait a moment and the camera will come on as voltage is applied to that fuse box here comes the camera it's looking at the front and there is the view out the back so it works on ignition 
and then when I turn off the engine, of course, the power will go off just like the screen here. When I open the door, everything goes out. So that's with it connected to the 12 volt only when the ignition is on. Like I said before, if you need it to be on all the time while the engine is off, you can use the other slot and one of the other hardware kits that's designed for that application. So there you have it. Hopefully you found this video useful. If so, please don't forget to like the video. And if you want to see more helpful tips on modifying your RV, please don't forget to subscribe. And you will find a link below the video for the material I discussed. And I would appreciate if you use my affiliate links to make your purchases because it does go to help support this channel. Thank you for watching.